Are you guys ready for another Indie-tastic review? Oh, Christ, I can't even say that with a straight face. <laughs> Good Lord. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, bringing you all with another IndyCar Diecast review, as you can tell by that. Really bad pun. I mean, good lord, I gotta keep telling myself, hey, you know, you gotta stop with this shit because, heck, it's gonna get old real quick, but whatever, though, story of my life. Today, it's gonna be on the diecast that I picked up from my good buddies, the Stroke will be diecast. Make sure to use that promo code OBBYT to get $5 off the shipping in the next purchase. And you realize you can see my car lovers, I guess, right there. So, hello, there's my hand right there. <laughs> and today, it's gonna be on the diecast that I think a lot of people are actually, I would recommend picking up because, um, it's gonna be the final time that we are gonna see, uh, this guy in this team. And, and yeah, as you guys know, he's gonna have a new beginning and a new chapter um with um with a very familiar team in the indycar series today it's going to be on alexander rossi's uh i guess you could say his final andretti autosport diecast um this is his 2022 napa slash auto nation a very interesting collaborative uh livery uh honda delara for um andretti autosport so uh yeah i mean uh this is the last one guys as you guys know rossi has been a long time competitor with uh you know andretti autosport of course you know his most notable win is of course the 2016 uh, 100th running of the indianapolis 500 and uh yeah i mean other than that guys i mean it has been a kind of a long stretch for alexander rossi he still hasn't got that championship but uh yeah this one right here is definitely a very interesting paint scheme i will say is probably my least favorite napa car out of the bunch because it, we it, this is a collaborative paint scheme guys um as you see it has the nap it has part of the nap it's like someone just took the napa car and the automation car from a few years ago and just said hey you know we're gonna whip this thing together and uh yeah we're gonna show those meyer shank cars who are who's the boss because they also have the pink auto nation um um the, the pink auto nation uh liveries as well but um yeah interesting very interesting to say at the very least but um yeah i mean <laughs> as you guys know i mean alexander rossi is you know i i don't know i could consider him like maybe the kyle bush of any car because you know he's definitely an aggressive driver but we'll get on to more in a second guys as you get right there you can read all the stats right there he's also good friends with you know um you know my favorite indy car driver at the time was with james hinchcliffe but um yeah enough of that reading time let's go and this diecast to be the official unboxing of alexander rossi's 2022 napa auto nation car and already, guys, we got this diecast out of its box, and my god, guys, um, I, I will say that this livery is starting to grow on to me. I mean, I like I said in the introduction, guys, I was not really a big fan of this. I mean, um, I think like what well, I think the first time I saw this livery was when David Land kind of leaked the, the paint schemes on R Factor, or, or I'm sorry, I said paint schemes. Uh, you know, all the IndyCar experts got from me be like, it's a livery, how dare you say paint schemes? You know what I mean, all right? It's it's hard being a NASCAR fan and an IndyCar fan as well because you know, you know, you're gonna mix things up. Oh lord, thank god this was F1. I know all the F1 fans would be all over my ass and be like, you just said paint scheme? Oh my god, you're such a NASCAR fan. Well, thank you, I am. But getting on back to the diecast, guys, I will say, probably the biggest thing, I, I mean, okay, the Napa Blue does work on this. Um, it kind of sounds like I almost want to do like a rant review, but I don't because I know this diecast is going to be pretty valuable in the year's run because this is the final um, time we are going to see. Uh, this is the final diecast that we are going to have with Alexander Rossi and Andretti Autosport. Um, and, you know, they, they, they've had a lot of, you know, uh, let's just say, you know, the history of them has been interesting. You know, all I can say is that Alexander Rossi, man, he is definitely a driver that I, I, I would say I had respect for him. Um, he is a little more aggressive. I'm not really the biggest fan of aggressive drivers, but we need someone like Alexander Rossi in the sport. And with him going to, you know, Errol McLaren SP next year, which you guys know I'm a big fan of Errol McLaren SP with Pat Ward and Felix Rosenquist, uh, he will be taking over the seven car, which is going to be interesting. Um, that's going to be interesting, to say the least. I mean, hopefully he doesn't piss off his teammates like he did, uh, you know, at Mid-Ohio. I mean, my God, don't get me started on that, guys. He pissed off Grosjean, and then he got into it with his other teammates. That was just an overall tough day for uh, <laughs> for, for Andretti Osports. I mean, um, I, I, I don't even want to know what the team meeting was. But, of course, the big thing i got to talk about this diecast is that Alexander Rossi finally got a win he finally got a win and that was at the uh i believe it was the gallagher grand prix not the gmr grand prix which was in may this was the uh the second race as you guys know you know any car does run uh this is when they had that double header uh or the triple header with the xfinity series race and the cup series race at the uh at the uh, indy road course um you know, I don't really got to say too much about that, about that, about those races. I mean, I, I kind of do miss the Brickyard, to be honest with you guys. I mean, I know that sounds kind of weird, but especially how the, the Gen 7 car is now, um, 
I kind of would like to see a Brickyard again. But, you know, this race was a lot more quieter than, uh, you know, what we had at the uh, <laughs> at the GMR Grand Prix, which was just a rain fest. And what was it? Colton Herta was able to win that race. Speaking of the devil, guys, I still got Colton Herta's card to review. So if you guys want me to review that, I mean, uh, feel free to comment below. I mean, I know that paint scheme, or I'm sorry, livery is pretty much exactly the same. Um, but, uh, my God, my whole, uh, I got to remind myself, I got to, like, I don't know, clean up my freaking, uh, you know, my uh, my white stand because it looks like, I don't know, it looks like it just came, up for, it just came from Indianapolis. I mean, good lord it's just completely raced up speaking of that guys look at that i mean this windshield is completely just it looks like this is probably a raced version guys look at all those specs that are on that wind uh, on that arrow screen holy mother of christ green light my god and seem to smear too my lord i guess someone got a little too excited but um as you guys can tell, one thing I like about these green light IndyCar diecasts is, is for ten slash eleven dollars you can get this diecast, and you see it's a metal chassis with rubber tires. Hmm, that's something that we should have got with the Gen Seven car that costs us fifteen dollars. Except they don't have rubber tires. So you're definitely getting the better bang for your buck with these IndyCar diecast guys. I mean, because, you know, <laughs> the, I tell you what, if Green Light ends up cutting corners and puts plastic tires on these, that that that'd be kind of laughable. Um my, my, they might go bankrupt because of that. <laughs> I mean, uh, I know Greenlight wouldn't do that to me. I will say Greenlight definitely does have some quality issues. I will say that. Nowhere near as bad as Lionel, but, um, you know, they, they, they could up, the, up up their game a little bit. But um, I think there was one more thing I was about to say for this. But, yeah, Alexander Rossi, guys, was able to uh, finally, after what, it was like, oh, almost three years. And I think it was like he broke like a 45 or a 49. It's either 45 or 49, somewhere in the 40s, um, race drought. Um, I think his last ever win was like, okay, you guys want to, if this is to, this shows you how quick time has come by. 2019's Road America race. That was the last time Alexander Rossi was able to compete in a race and win. So <laughs> it has been a long time. So you know, I kind of do feel for the, feel bad for the guy because you know he's had a lot of good runs. He probably could have got a second Indy 500 for all we know, guys. Uh, especially in 2019. Um, as much as I would love to, to see that, guys, I'm glad Pagano won that race fair and square. Um, Rossi, I think, is definitely going to be in a big position next year, guys, with Aaron McLaren SP because they are competing for championships. And you know, these last few years with Andretti Osborne, guys, it just, as you can guys can tell, Andretti Osborne has kind of fallen off the cliff, guys. Their reliability with Honda has just been awful. I mean, it screwed up Colt Herta, it screwed up with Rossi, even Grosjean as well. I mean, I'm hoping these guys at Andretti Osborne get their shit together, especially now with Kyle Kirkwood's going to be taking over this right next year. But getting on to the sponsors right here, we do get, you know, the nice pink auto nation. Okay, the only thing I got to criticize about this livery, as I was going to say something about it, but I got cut off. I think the only thing I, okay, the Napa Blue does work. Work, but the yellow i think is what throws everything off if, if that yellow okay if they would have just i don't know i know the napa logo is supposed to look like that but if they were just to change that napa logo like i don't know white and then invert the colors or do something like that i think it would look a lot better because the yellow is just not really it's not bringing the scheme together it's like this car is having like a midlife identity crisis it doesn't know what it wants to be um i think they only did this uh just because i guess for cost reasons probably um since they didn't want uh, i guess they didn't want to spend the extra dough to you know uh you know sponsor you know a, a whole nother car um because you guys know i mean these two have been sponsors with rossi for quite a while now um especially napa um that sponsor that he was able to win at the 100th running the indianapolis 500 but um it is still a cool car, but I don't know, guys. I I kind of prefer the Shank cars a little bit more. I think the Meyer Shank cars look a lot better. I mean, I don't know. It, like, I don't know. Like, the blue is cool, but just, I don't know, guys. I, I kind of actually prefer, um, what, was, what was it, Romain Groshan's uh, Napa car that he drove at Gateway. I kind of prefer that one a little bit more, guys, than this. This one right here, like I said, it looks like it's having a midlife crisis. But you see all the little other sponsors right there. This thing is just decked out with so many sponsors. It's not even funny. Um, but you see AutoNation. You see the nice little, uh, you know, uh, back, uh, the, the nice pieces of detail that we got right there in a nice 27. Um, there's no detail right there on the gearbox or any logos like that, like the Penske cause, um, which, by the way, I appreciate you guys' support on that Scott McLaughlin car, and we do got a military logo right there because, you know, uh, it's like military support our troops, so that's pretty cool. But now let's go into the side side comparison. We're actually doing a double side side comparison because, like I said, this car is kind of like a collaborative paint scheme of these two. All right, so here's the Napa car from the uh, 2021, um, from the from 2021. And if you guys noticed, uh, you know, I, I, it seems like Greenlight just does not know how to get the Napa cars right on these Indy cars. Uh, that's just something that they always done. And we see just, I don't know, just, I don't know if it's the mold or just how they print up the logos, but just the Napa logos just always look weird and warped uh, with, with no matter what chassis they have, um, you know, 
I don't know. That's just something I, I guess has something to do with just how the Napa logo is. I mean, these things look a lot, look a lot better than the first uh, Napa cars that we got from like what, like uh, the Arrow Kit days um, with like in 2015 or so. My God, the, those Napa logos were screwed up. But you see right there, the blue is a lot more darker. I did notice. I mean, um, of course, you know, the paint schemes, of course, are the livery layout is pretty much exactly kind of the same. There are some differences, of course, you know, with that split, um, you know, with that, you know, that, 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 uh, collaborative paint scheme. And then here's the automation car from uh, 2020, which, you know, we were able to get that. And good luck trying to find this car. I think this car has dried up in value, but you see, it's pretty basic. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the gray does look kind of basic. So I think the blue does look better than the gray or I don't know. They could have done black. I mean, um, you know, cause I don't know. They probably couldn't do black. I think the black just looks so much better. Like I said, the shank cars, I think really know how to make, you know, a better automation car, but this is before the days we had those shank, uh, cars. Um, well, we didn't really had any, uh, Meyer shank die cast produced, um, until Elio's, uh, 500 win. And then of course, Elio's this year's hoping we get Paginos, but, um, let me tell you guys what, um, Alexander Rossi, I think he's going to be back in his winning ways next year. Definitely. I think this was a smart move for him, and we're going to probably see a lot of success from him um, in the not-so-distant future coming into March for the 2023 IndyCar Series season. Um, as much as I'm disappointed with the schedule, guys, I mean, um, it's pretty much exactly the same, just except with the different Detroit uh, racetrack that we're going to have. But, um, yeah, that's all i got to say about this diecast, guys. Uh, you know, shout-out to all the Alexander Rossi fans who are watching this. Um, like my good buddy, Matt Urkel, I know he's a fan of Rossi. Um, I know a lot of Chase Elliott fans do like Rudy for Rossi because you know that Napa sponsorship does correlate quite well. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, IndyCar diecast review of Alexander Rossi's 2022 Napa Auto Nation uh, Honda Delara for Andretti Osport. Come on, subscribe to this been OVB. See you guys next time on another Napa Tastic review. And holy hell, I got to stop with these puns.